This summer, members of the Green Party of England and Wales will be voting to elect new members of the Green Party Executive, commonly known as GPEX. Now, members of the Executive are elected to specific portfolios, and today I'm going to be joined by the only candidate in the running for the Finance Coordinator position. But before I introduce them, I just have one thing to ask of you, which is that you scroll down right now and hit subscribe. With that out of the way, and without further ado, I'll introduce who we have with us today, which is Julian Cusack, standing for Finance Coordinator. Julian, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks, Chris. How are you? I'm I'm good. This is the third of these that I've done today, so I'm a little uh, sleepy, but getting through it, getting by. Um, so to kick us off nice and easy, why are you standing to be the Green Party's next Finance Coordinator? Well, I feel passionate about the success of the Green Party and want to see that continued and sustained. And I believe that I have some skills and experience which should be helpful to the organisation nationally as it continues its preparations for the vital upcoming general election. So um, I hope to be of, of service to the party. That's why I'm standing. So uh, you mentioned there that you think you've got experience uh, that was useful to the party. So obviously you're taking on the finance coordinator position, which is primarily responsible for the party's finance, as ad people would guess. And GPEX is the body that has over overall oversight of the party's finances. Can you talk a little bit about your experience of managing finances in large organisations or with complex, uh, difficult budgets? Sure. Well, I trained as a chartered accountant. I've been working in finance roles all my adult life. Um, in my business life, um, I found myself um, towards the middle part of my career in the insurance and reinsurance world, where I held uh, positions as chief financial officer and chief risk officer and chief executive officer of large, complicated international insurance and reinsurance operations with a very big exposure to the understanding, analysis, and mitigation of risk. Um, but I always um, kept my hand in with smaller organizations and throughout my life, I've been the treasurer of multiple different charities and NGOs on a pro bono basis. And in the 1980s, I was an active member of the Labour Party in Ipswich. And there I was treasurer of the constituency Labour Party in Ipswich for many years. So I've got experience directly of managing the finances of a political party. So what I wanted to ask you is what you think are the big uh, challenges that the party might be might face in terms of its finances and how you would help to tackle them? Well, the, the, the big overriding challenge is that compared to um, what I like to call the other major parties, um, we are um, very modestly financed. Um, so um, we don't have the big bucks donations that come into the Conservative Party from private donors or from the unions to the Labour Party. Uh, we are mainly funded by our membership through membership subscriptions and additional donations. And so um, the party has to be run on a very tight budget um, and to avoid exposing itself to risks that could threaten the mainstream expenditure that's so important to us for our electoral success. So I believe I can bring that skill of financial risk management to, to bear on the party. So we've rattled through my sort of financial questions very, very quickly. The second chunk of questions I wanted to ask you about are um, in relation to kind of the wider responsibilities of GPEX, because obviously, although you're standing for the particular finance coordinator portfolio, as a member of the executive, you'd also be making decisions and have responsibility for a whole range of other issues within the party. Um, and so I've got a few questions I wanted to ask you about specific things there. The first of them is um, around the issue of transphobia. So for, for a number of years, uh, there's been a lot of criticism leveled at the Green Party for the way it's handled transphobia within its ranks. Now, GPEX has some responsibilities over issues relating to equality and diversity and issues that would lead to the tackling of this issue. So what I wanted to ask you is how you would, on GPEX, work to tackle the issue of transphobia in the Green Party? Well, um, all I can really say about that is that um, in my professional life, in the company I'm currently uh, working for, um, we have had at senior level in that company significant training on issues to do with um, trans and non-binary um, employees and potential employees. I found that training really helpful in, in improving my understanding of the issue. Um, and the importance of being sensitive to 
people as individuals and respecting all their um, protected characteristics where, where they exist. Um, but you know, I'm I'm not an expert on identity politics, and it's not something that ever comes up in my local party or in the work that I do here in Suffolk, um, working for getting um, councillors and other people elected to the Green Party positions. So um, I, I'm looking forward to learning from my GPEX colleagues if I'm elected, um, you know, more about this subject and how, how it should be tackled. Many people watching, I'm sure, will feel that you're blessed by this not having <laughs> reared its ugly head in your local party. The second question I wanted to ask you um, that's sort of broader than the finance role is around um, the party's kind of political ambitions and political strategy. Now, GPAX, alongside the Green Party Regional Council, GPRC, is one of the two primary governing bodies of the party and has some oversight of the party's political direction, strategy and objectives. So I wanted to ask you what you think right now the party needs to be doing to ensure that it can meet its political ambitions and strategy. Well, I think there's three things that we need to do, and that's preparing for elections, preparing for elections and preparing for elections. I think that. Um, I'm committed to, and I think the Green Party is committed to um, gaining power and influence through electoral processes, however um, deficient um, many of us think they are. And we know that uh, with hard work um, and uh, the right targeting, it is possible for Greens to get elected. And we hope that that can now extend up into the elections of the House of Commons, which we expect to take place next year. So that to me is the absolute priority is preparing the party for the general election. And I always like to finish these interviews on a series of slightly less serious questions. So mm -hmm. uh, the difficult ones are out the way. We're on to the slightly less serious ones. The first of which is, what's your favourite and least favourite Green Party policy? Um, my favourite policy is probably, I have sort of many support for onshore wind. And my least favourite, uh, the risk of upsetting any colleagues, is probably the existing formulation of monetary policy. Do you mind me asking what, what you mean by that? Um, well, the, the way it's written at the moment appears to propose giving influence over the creation of money to a non-elected group, and I think that's... I can understand why that's being said, but I think it's probably not the right way to go. Brilliant. Well, thanks for the clarity. Uh, which book has most influenced your politics? Um, Limits to Growth, which I read when it first came out, which tells me something about my age, perhaps. Excellent. Uh, if you're Prime Minister for one day, what one policy would you change? Um, I would immediately enact the Green Party policy to restore the cut in universal credit and double it to £40. Pounds. My last one is who in the Green Party inspires you the most? Caroline Lucas. Well, Julian, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for your time. OK, thank you, Chris. So that was Julian Cusack, uh, the only candidate in this year's election for finance coordinator in the Green Party's executive elections. I say only candidate, there is also the option to vote for reopen nominations, uh, who is a careerist and stands in every internal Green Party election. Uh, before I let you all leave, I just have a few final things to ask of you. The first of which is to scroll down right now and hit subscribe. Whilst you're there, please do hit like and let us know what you thought about this conversation in the comments. We've got lots of other interviews coming up in the next couple of weeks, so please do keep an eye out for those. And finally, if you are able to, please do head to bright-green.org forward slash donate so that you can continue to put out videos like this and all the articles, news, coverage we do constantly. So that's it from me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very, very soon.